Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unsan Chitta. Tonight I wanted to talk about <clears throat> something that um, in some cases might elicit the response from you of, wow, he must have really dropped a lot of acid. Perhaps not. I didn't drop a lot of acid, so you would not be accurate in that assessment. But anyway, um, and it struck me also uh, that in the days of the Zoom call, where if you um, move in a certain way, your hand can sort of merge into the background or your face or whatever body part might move in the uh, out of the camera range. So it brought me back to a uh, one of my realizations that I had um, after a prolonged uh, meditation session. And it was that, you know, if you go back to like the traditional sort of view of atoms where it's a bunch of electrons orbiting a nucleus and there's a whole lot of space in between said electron and said nucleus, that um, if given all that space and given all the atoms in my body and the body of all other things, all other phenomena, that if I timed it just right for one infinitesimal second, I could actually fall right through something that would seemingly be uh, solid. Just like my hand sort of can disappear into the background in a Zoom call. And yes, uh, admittedly that is one of my odder observations, but it's one of my observations. So that also led me to think of uh, Huayen practice and uh, a couple of the Huayen uh, patriarchs, Tushun and uh, Fatang, uh, talked about the interpenetration of all dharmas without hindrance. <clears throat> and um, Huayen Buddhism, if, if you're not up on it, which would be understandable, is the school of Buddhism that uh, uses the Avatamsaka or Huayen or Flower Garland Sutra as its uh, basis where whence it springs so um and then that also made me think of something that i believe came from dogen about uh delusion and awakening and so i want to read something that's uh from the yn uh corpus because emptiness and existence merge are yet, are not yet one excuse me let's try that again because emptiness and existence merge and are one yet not one this practice can also be analyzed into four propositions because existence is emptiness you do not abide in birth and death because emptiness is existence you do not dwell in nirvana because emptiness and existence are one whole both being there you dwell in both birth and death and in nirvana and because emptiness and existence cancel each other out and neither remains you dwell neither in birth and death nor in nirvana now the the dogen thing um had to do with as i said 
um, delusion and awakening. And you could even throw in the thing that you might hear in some Zen circles about samsara is nirvana. And on the one hand, you could look at it as, well, samsara is nirvana. Hmm, what does that mean? It means this is as good as it gets? Well, not really. That's not quite how it should be read. It goes back to what I just said there about uh, emptiness and existence. And they, I don't like to use the phrase cancel each other out, although in a plus one, plus minus one sort of way, it is true because when one uh, is there and the other is there, and the one of them is the negative one to the other one's plus one, so there is nothing left. Neither are there anymore. And if you think of that in terms of the conceptual thought of nirvana and samsara as two different things, and then as, oh, okay, samsara is nirvana, so they're both the same thing, but really they're just not a thing. Delusions, erroneous views, unwholesome actions, do they somehow evolve into awakened thoughts, awakened views, awakened actions? Do you start out as like delusion and then you somehow evolve into um, awakened? Dogen's proposition was that no, there is that and there is this and they both exist simultaneously and not exist simultaneously. Do weeds somehow like evolve into flowers? Well, no. They're both vegetation and we like one, so we call that a flower and we don't like the other one, so we refer to that as a weed. But, you know, they are two yet one also, as we like to say sometimes, not two, not one. If we get stuck into terms like emptiness and existence, and even thinking of them in terms of them being merged, we're missing it. We're stuck in conceptual thought. The one thing we do have to evolve is getting past the layer of conceptual thought we have on these things where it's all academic and there's emptiness and there's form and then form is emptiness and emptiness is form. And the fact is that as Fatsang points out, yeah, they cancel each other out. So what's left is, as some in our school would like to say, cots. Water and waves, common metaphor, right? You can tell the difference between still water and a wave. You may not be able to tell where one starts and the other one stops, but they're identical in their wetness. Yet the waves are doing this and the still water is like this, but they're both part of the same thing. Weeds and flowers, yeah, they're both occupying the same bit of dirt. They're both vegetation. They don't add up to something, right? Delusion doesn't, as I said, evolve into awakening. Delusion doesn't 
count for more than awakening. It's just, there's delusion, there's awakening. There are both and neither. Touch more reading here. Scripture says sentient beings are themselves the character of nirvana and do not become any more extinct. Moreover, attaining nirvana is the nature of sentient beings, which does not undergo rebirth. Scripture also says those who come to realize thusness do not see birth and death and do not see nirvana. Birth and death and nirvana are equal and without distinction. It may be a matter of the gradual awakening approach or maybe a misreading or a misunderstanding of the nature of delusion and wisdom or awakening. Delusion isn't necessarily a bad thing and awakening isn't necessarily a good thing. They're equal without distinction. When we realize that they're both concepts and rather than just this, they're that, then maybe we're really starting to get somewhere, which is nowhere, which is where we are right here, right now, from moment to moment to moment, 